173rd and Broadway. All right, who we got here? Uh, my name is Jerry Castanos, owner and founder of 3D Heights. <laughs> a spontaneous hijacked interview. Uh, I mean, you you're from your neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, born and raised right here in 170th Street. Yeah. Yeah, so I've uh, been away for a while, and I came back, and I figured I could get back into the community and come back and start this business, see where it goes. Uh, so I was explaining earlier that 99% of the people who purchase our 3D printers are entrepreneurs and startups or small businesses. They tend to use the technology to augment what they do already, their existing business, or add something different. Um, either they're prototyping a new design, or they're printing out customized pieces or parts, replacement parts, uh, they're creating molds, whatever the case is. Uh, the second thing we do is create customized replicas or, or bobbleheads, 3D printed bobbleheads. And that allows people to kind of see the technology in use without forcing the technology on them. Because uh, at the end of the day, people really like the end result. Uh, not necessarily working with the technology directly. And ultimately, I think what's going to happen is small businesses are going to implement 3D printing so they can offer uh, customized, specialized products. So you're going to walk into a store and it's not going to be how it was before where you're forced an item. You're going to say, hey, I want this, this way and that way. They're going to, no problem, come back in a day and then that time is going to shorten, come back in an hour. And hopefully one day that time shortens to, well, give us a few seconds and we'll go and uh, make it for you. So that, I think that's where the future The Star Trek replicator, yeah, where it uses energy. I mean, that's in my future, you know, my, I'm a Trekkie, so I think that, that's going to actually take, uh, take fruit soon, hopefully. So now with the technology we have, someone comes off the street, and this uses photogrammetry. So what happens is they put their head inside, it takes nine pictures, and it creates a 3D model. And then that 3D model could be superimposed on different body parts. So okay. once you have a 3D model, it gets sent to the 3D printer and it gets printed out in color, the customer, the end user, knows that they have their face superimposed on a miniature a doll, pretty much a toy. Now they're, they're going to start expecting more customization, personalization. You can be your own superhero. You can be your own superhero, that's right. Yep. Be your own superhero, your own basketball player, you have your own jersey, whatever you want. See yourself in the future. We had um, the youngest actually, customer we had, it was actually about one and a half years old. Their parents put them... Can you show uh, us that? Yeah. yeah. So the youngest customer was about one and a half years old. Their parents took a picture of them inside the bobblehead shop, uh, put a tux on them, and when they got them, you know, they had his face, his one and a half year old face on a body, and they were kind of really excited about that. Right here. Okay. And it lines you up, then the picture's taken, and immediately after the picture's taken, it's instant, pretty much, and creates a 3D model, and then you're able to use it. It creates an OBJ, uh, OBJ file. The, the consumer 3D printers all operate off the STL, uh, and that's a standard file that was used since 1987, or before that. Uh, so it's very simple. In general, the consumer 3D printers at the moment are a hot glue gun with a motor and a computer that moves around, and it just moves on that plate, and all axis is creating the object, layer by layer. And once you have the object, you just take it off and it's ready to go. So you, you're starting to see a lot more advances in this technology as a whole. So you know, as it increases, it gets better, it gets cheaper. Right now, what people are paying for are for features. Um, so you have printers as low as $200, and then any increase in that is because it's Wi-Fi, it's portable, you know, it, it just keeps adding on. But the basic, uh, a basic 3D printer could easily cost you $200. These here are from 3D systems. They cost $1,299. They're Wi-Fi, touch screen. It comes with a USB uh, connection if you don't want to go through their Wi-Fi. Uh, it brings its cartridge. Each cartridge is $48. And depending on how much material you use building an item, it depends on how much, you know, how much you're going to keep buying. It's just like using regular paper. If you're constantly printing, you're constantly refilling, you're constantly purchasing. Colors in different types. There's ABS. Um, and ABS is like the Lego type plastic, and there's also PLA that's uh, biodegradable, recyclable, I believe. We it's have a two Cubex, uh, which is uh, the larger version of 3D systems. The X has two and three different filaments, so it can do different colors and different materials at the same time. And we just brought on MakerBot, FlashForge, LeapFrog, a few others. There's, when we first opened, there's a few competitors on the market. Now it's, you know, it's, it's competitor heavy. There's a lot of uh, brands on the market. The 3D printed dragon done by a gentleman named Kurt. He actually created it from a very small 3D printer and uh, put it together and glued it and painted it. So yeah, it's definitely doable. <laughs> so we do classes, we hold events, 
This Thursday, we're holding an uh, open out art gallery because we're part of the Uptown Art Stroll. So we should have about 40 to 50 people here uh, exhibiting different artists, uh, video art, painting, sculpting, 3D printing art. Uh, 3D printed art. Uh, we do classes, intro to 3D printing, intro to 3D scanning, intro to 3D designing. And in the summer, we're going to implement Minecraft and have that game where we could show kids how to design in Minecraft so they could 3D print from a, from a game that they're already familiar with. Uh, well, this is part of one of the art exhibits. Uh, so it's a unique fungus that's going to go with the art. Uh, I don't have a file present and you can see it, but yeah, it's just we a, don't interrupt it or uh, a fungus. It's going to be like a big mushroom? Yes. So is that the cap or is that the stem? Like that's, gets, the stem that's the bottom part. It's building up. So it's going to get even wider. It's going to get tall. Right, right. And so this thing will drop. So your limit is like that tall. Five inches, yep. Yeah, so yeah. this is actually used as a, this is a model of a banana from our MCOR Iris 3D printer. It uses paper to create photorealistic items. And it just uses a, each layer of paper is one digital layer. And it just cuts it out with a razor, um, glues it down, puts another sheet of paper on top of it, gives it a thousand pounds of pressure, repeats the process until you have them off. It's like as dense as wood? Yes. It keeps pressing it down with a thousand pounds of pressure. So it gets that density. It's great for prototyping, uh, model creation, architectural. That's a wooden uh, I, uh, tablet there? Yeah. A oh, paper. Yeah. Yeah, paper, right. And it, But it's it's a kind of glue mixed with this uh, pulp. Well, it's glue mixed with regular office paper. I mean, you can see here, there's tons of different material. There's plastic, ceramics, food, bioprinting. Uh, so you can use organic material. There is uh, carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar, gold, silver. I mean, the materials are growing every day. We'll just take regular office paper, feed it in here, and then the machine, a robotic arm grabs it, moves it over, places it down. It has a small razor inside here that cuts it. Then it has a glue head that glues it together. And then it just repeats the process, grabbing it, placing it, repeating it. Uh, because people could already take pictures with their phones. You know, we have cameras and pictures everywhere. The next level is physical objects. Uh, so when you have a uh, memory, a moment, you might be able to, pretty soon, within a year or so, you might be able to 3D scan an environment and then 3D print that environment as a keepsake, a memento, something more uh, than just a regular photo. You know? <laughs> we'll have to have all another planet to replicate this one onto. Right? Yeah, no. technology, new technology, especially technology like this, should be open to the public. Uh, sometimes patents hold things down, hold it back when otherwise it should. Uh, so it's just my opinion. So this, this technology was discovered around 1986, 1987, and it was placed on the patent. You know, just like all technologies, to allow the person who discovered it a chance to you know, grow and make money and do other discoveries. Uh, however, there's also a downside to that, where if if the technology was released to the regular public, you know, in its raw form, because the technology hasn't changed. At that point, you know, they they put together a hot glue gun with a motor, with a small circuit board, and they were able to tell the the, the motor and the hot glue gun where to go, how much to heat up. Right? So if that technology, uh, about 20 or 30 years ago, was released when it was discovered, right now we would have had a, a larger evolution of that technology, because the general public, uh, the world public, would have modified, made it better, engineered, uh, for actual application, human application, everyday application, rather than just business to business transaction. 10, 15 years, the houses will be 3D printed, the, the construction projects will be scaled up. Mm -hmm. it, They're it, already doing it, companies like D-Shape, mm -hmm. 3D printing items in a warehouse, another company in China, they 3D printed a house, or a container-like house. Or another company in South America, they've done a customizable house on the beach with optimized uh, solar power so I think it produced 150% energy so they were actually able to add more energy onto the grid as the way it was designed and another company in the Netherlands but more exciting than that is medical application so the 3D printing of livers, kidneys, hearts and then the company Organovo should have a functioning liver by the end of this year for human use. No more donating, no more oh donation God. list, no more you know people dying because of different body parts it's just we urban farming, we told you before that, and growing uh, extra trees and plants on top of rooftops. 
definitely necessary. All, all that stuff that's not incredibly huge and complicated can be done if you have a community backing. There's a need for it, there's a want for it, but someone has to be the first to do it or else you know, it's not like uh, you can invite people to your one bedroom or two bedroom apartment here and grow a garden. You know what I'm saying? It's, we're limited in space between mm -hmm. New York and the city. Someone has to be the first to show someone else. Right, so they can say, hey, look, look what I got. And then, oh, I want that too. And, you know, kind of pass it within the community. But, um, so that hopefully that's what we're doing, where people come in, we let them know what the technology's about, then someone else, one person gets it, so someone else, and hey, I have to have one. And now they start inventing and creating and kind of thinking for themselves. And that's, that's the plan.